You kind of have to. No. Okay, here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Liz Easley from the USC Lancaster campus, and today I am interviewing two undergraduate research assistants. Please introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your major and where you are in your degree processes. So my name is Chloe West. I am a sophomore here at USCO, and I'm doing the pre-pharmacy program here and I will be finishing up my prerequisites, um, and I will be graduating this spring with my associates in science and then transferring to the University of South Carolina, Columbia College of Pharmacy for the next four years. Nice. <laughs> I'm Ariana. I'm a dual enrollment student at Indian High School. I'm currently a senior there and a sophomore here. Um, I will be graduating in about two weeks with my associates in science. Um, as well as graduation with leadership distinction, which we'll talk a little bit about later. And from there, I'll be going to Clemson for my next four years. Great. Well, can you all tell us a little bit about how you got involved in undergraduate research? And is this something that you plan to do uh, before starting your collegiate career? Ariana, we'll start with you. Okay. So what was the question? About <laughs> undergraduate research. How did you get Right, involved? right, right. Okay, so, well, first it kind of started with Dr. Easley sending me an email about doing GLD. And so we'll just go through the quick version of that story of, I went to that meeting, we were trying to figure out my pathway, and we found out that I could do research as my, um, as my GLD pathway. And so that's kind of where it started. I also just have a natural, like, interest in body composition and like nutrition and all that so it kind of just all like fell under what I'm like really interested in so great Chloe undergraduate research wasn't originally something that I had planned to do because when I came to USCL I was a volleyball athlete right. so I didn't um know that USCL offered this and it actually um started I ended up um, not continuing for my sophomore year and I was in Dr. Easley's um lab and I actually approached her and was like, hey, are you doing research? <laughs> and that's just kind of how the process started because I was really interested, like Ariana, with research. And that can transfer over to pharmacy and get me a head start there. So I'm glad that you let me have that opportunity. Great. <laughs> it's been fun. And in fact, we're going to talk about now what our favorite parts of undergraduate research are. What's, what's been the best thing about participating in undergraduate research and why? Chloe, you want to start us off? Sure. So my favorite part is actually you guys. <laughs> um, I actually talked about this in my key insight that I'm I'm doing with Ariana in our GLD class is that research gives you so many new perspectives and working as a team, you get all these different ideas and you and you get the um joy of seeing how other people work together mm -hmm. and just experiencing and making new friends. Good. So I love yeah. that experience with research. Yeah, I definitely think like initially my the thing that I really liked was being able to like spend time with Chloe and Dr. Easley because we definitely had some interesting days in here. Um, <laughs> but then later on, like as like the semester's coming to a close, my favorite part was like being able to get out there and actually do stuff. Like I just I really love all of the things that I gained from research. And so that's like become more of my favorite part. Like, was I uncomfortable at the beginning? Yeah. But now that I've done it, like, there's just so much that I've gotten out of it. And so I just really love that I started at like literally having, I mean, I had social skills, but not that good. <laughs> but, and so then I moved on to like being able to deal with patients, knowing how to use like certain um, like softwares and all that kind of stuff. Great. Well, yeah. kind of keeping on that discussion pathway then. What about the transferable skills? So what transferable skills do you think that undergraduate research has helped you develop and how is that going to be useful in your future careers? Ariana, take yeah, it I was away. Gonna say, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep going with my idea. So I already <laughs> talked about some of the soft skills. Some more soft skills was more like collaboration, having to work in groups. And this was kind of like a really good opportunity to start at because at other universities, you have to start in a massive group. I mean, not massive, but like, 10 people probably and you'll have like graduate students and all that so like nobody's going to be on your same level really and here when you start you get to work with people who are like close to you in age close to you in like their classes and all that kind of stuff um 
two, there's like those those hard skills that transfer, like knowing how to properly take height measurements, waist measurements, all that kind of stuff. So that was our particular thing. Or in future studies, if you have to use other um, other instruments, instruments, there it goes. <laughs> um, you'll know how to do that, and then be able to kind of give that competitive edge of you go to another school and you already know how to use it. They don't have to explain it kind of thing. So good. Well, wait, what do you think? Um, transferable skills that I've learned, like you said, soft skills. Mm -hmm. I did learn um, some patients and things like that mm -hmm. that I had to gain from well, um, human biomedical research because it was an experience that I've never encountered before. So I did learn that. Um, I think the hard skills that you talked about, um, I really enjoyed the one-on-one -on -one time that um, Dr. Easley and I got to have. Um, especially when I was learning how to put data into the computer. And basically it's important to not only just be able to look at it, but to be able to interpret it and understand what you're looking at right? and understanding where the statistic came from and how this applies. And, and that was kind of what my research focused on is the statistical portion and how that two groups related to each other. So I think that that will continue over because mm -hmm. statistics are everywhere. Yeah. I think that was really important for me that I learned. So you saw a direct connection between the classes you've taken as far of as course. math and statistics uh -huh. to our research. And it really transferred it over. And I actually got a better experience from you explaining it to me and then also getting it in the, in the classroom. classroom. So it was just like this big open thing. Where I was like, I got this, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And what about the scientific or technical writing of an abstract. So I'm throwing a curveball in here. <laughs> what are your thoughts? How has that been different or a different experience? You know, when we write an abstract, it has to be, you know, 250 to 350 words, or maybe there's a character limit. How has writing an abstract kind of um, changed your view or, or taught you something new? How has that scientific writing experience um, impacted you? Yeah, I think I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're good. <laughs> um, well, it's definitely a lot more hours than you would expect out of <laughs> 300 words. Mm -hmm. But I mean, for me, I was taking chemistry 112 during that time. So I also had to write an abstract for them. And so it was really good for that because I wrote an abstract here and I was like, oh, this other abstract is going to be super easy. I mean, I spent eight hours on one. I can spend only two on the other. But it's just, it's a matter of, and everybody laughs when I use this word, but it's like a matter of like finessing it. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> We're laughing because it's true. And it's just like you have to be so precise with your word choice to get the point across right then and there efficiently, but without like feeling like you don't care or you're rushing it. It's just so like the epitome of efficiency in writing. Mm. Yeah, that was a good. Answer. That was a good. Answer. <laughs> we like it. We like it. Chloe, do you have anything yeah. you want to add? Sure. Um. Well, I've always been told that I was really good at English and that yeah. I could write my way through college. But so I enjoyed writing. I did not expect. I think on my research log, it was nine hours that yeah. we spent writing the abstract. I didn't expect that. Right. And I think one of the main things that I learned was researching the articles of other researchers that have published things and how that applies to your research and really like analyzing what they mm -hmm. put because I think a couple of times I misinterpreted what they were trying to say and you had to be like wait no they're saying this and it helped me um with my own research and develop that so I think it's important to understand the work of others to help your mm -hmm. study that's a good point yeah. all right all right to wrap it up here what <laughs> parting advice would you give to a student that is either considering research um, or someone that is coming to USC Lancaster or considering USC Lancaster or both. What what are your thoughts on that? Take it away, someone. You want me to go? <laughs> yes, yes, Chloe. <laughs> I would tell them to go for it <laughs> because like I said, I didn't know about it when I came on campus because I was on the volleyball side. Mm -hmm. But since I was exposed to it, um, it's an experience like no other campus can offer. I think that as a sophomore, I would have never got the opportunity at a like a bigger university to do this. And you get to learn so many transferable skills that we talked about. And especially for me as a pharmacist, as a future pharmacist, that that research is a really big part of your career and knowing how the aspects of these, uh, that what I've learned through research can be applied to what I'm gonna be doing in pharmacy. I think that it's really important to know that. And so it's a great experience for someone. And also I would tell them to do GLD as well. Right. I think that actually helped me to understand really what I was learning through research because of the reflection processes and things that I got to do. So 
it really helped me determine like what I actually learned <laughs> yeah. from that. Ariana? Okay. <laughs> well, um, I have a lot of words, but they're just <laughs> on my brain. Um, <laughs> I think it's just like, like Chloe said, you just have to do it. Like, it's not going to harm you. I mean, it's to get your research, like to be counted as like you're actually doing research, you have to do 40 hours and over, like that could be over a semester or two semesters. So you're literally like, come on, <laughs> like there's no point in not doing it. Like, especially if you're in the science field and you want to go into research, this can be your foundation and it could just like help, like you can grow your confidence through it. You can just, there's, there's just nothing you can lose really. And it like gives you the competitive edge. Like if, like, let's say you have to go into something that's like really specific and like competitive. Well, if you have research experience, a professor is more likely to want to work with you because you already have that experience and it kind of makes their job easier. So being able to start early and start now while it's like you're only a freshman or a sophomore is just so like it's such an opportunity that you just should not miss. Awesome. That was great. Yes, that yeah. was excellent answer today. Yeah. Thank you both so much <laughs> for spending time with with our audience talking about the benefits of research. Um, we appreciate you sharing your undergraduate research experience and your time at USCL with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>